Session two. <laughs> or is it 200? I, I'm not <laughs> sure. Kind of lost track. But anyway, let's see where we're at here on this thing. I pulled it up. Huh? Okay, we did that already. There, there we are. Uh, we finished right there where the Spirit does these things so that He can bless us and use us as prayer channels or for outlets or ambassadors of His power in the world. So we can definitely de not just declare, but display that Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, buried and rose again, Amen. and now is alive. Hallelujah. So, in, in the understanding of what the uh, manifestation and the work of the Holy Ghost is, and some of the attributes and, and things, titles that have been ascribed to him, uh, the wind we've been looking at is also his life-giving. And Ezekiel 37, 8 and 10, I think a lot of people are familiar with that. Let me adjust this here so it may be a little pick up a little better. And when I beheld lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these flames that they may live. Who was he prophesying to? He's saying, come, Holy Ghost to God. Come, wind, and breathe upon these things. Amen. And bring life. And that's what he did. Also, we've seen it when he breathed into Adam. There was just dust and dirt. He put it together. And he breathed into it. And boom, it became a living soul. So the same life-giving flow of the Holy Ghost that did these things is the same one who's in us. And, and remember, uh, and this just came to me to say this one, that the Holy Ghost is in there to quicken our mortal flesh. Amen. Your mortal flesh is not your soul. Your mortal flesh is not your spirit. Your mortal flesh is this little vehicle we have here. And quicken means to make it alive. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know about you, Amen. but it's, it's about time yes, that Lord. we quit letting our flesh just die yeah. And, and go through the torments and, and the tribulations that the world has to offer and sin and all of this stuff because if sin has been annihilated, the results of sin was death. If there's no sin, why should there be a death? That's right. the, the main reason there is a death is because we're not speaking the life of the Spirit to quicken the mortal <coughs> body. Instead, we'll bring Him in to try to help us harness and fight things off, but I think we need to start speaking more life. Yes. yes. Into the yes. flesh. Life into Thank you. what happens when people really begin to age is that their cells stop reproducing properly. The cells do not have the right materials to reproduce because your cells reproduce every day. When, when, what happens is, is that there's a depletion in the body and the cells stop reproducing properly. So they have to start uh, mutating and the cells that don't... Uh, reproduced properly uh, begins to bring changes about in your body. Well, we have the life-giving power of the Holy Ghost of God in us. And I'm in agreement with you yes, Lord. that Amen. the design cell structure for your cell, your yes. DNA, yes. by the grace of God, is still marked by God. Amen. He knows exactly what it is. And I'm in agreement with you right now as we bring a petition to our Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. And we command our body to reproduce every cell properly based yeah. upon the blueprint of the DNA originally set in our body by our Heavenly Father yeah. that it will stop reproducing mutations and reproducing improperly, but every cell will be perfect and properly reproduced. We command the molecular structure of our body right now to bow yes. to the living word of God and to be refreshed, reconstructed, and renewed with the exact cell properties that God had ordained. And the breath of God breathes within you and upon you to bring to life now 
those original cells that were to be there to reproduce properly that by the grace of God we will live and not die. Hallelujah. That by the grace of God our strength and our youth yes. will come back and be renewed in us yes. by the will of God and by the administration of the provision of our Heavenly Father. We declare it. We decree it. We call it done and thank you Father for your blessings in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. That's that's part of the presence of the Holy Ghost. Yes, thank you. But we don't know to do that until we hear it. Yes, thank you. But when we hear it, it's time to start doing it. Come on. Amen. It's what we were talking at the Come end on. of the other one. There's so much that it, it if the things that Jesus had done and said were all written down, John said even the world itself couldn't contain the books. Amen. <coughs> Well, we, we see the same type of a thing in the Holy Ghost today. I mean, me and Clyde and a bunch of us we talked about before is that the, the true uh, testimony of the Spirit of God, the Spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus, is your story. It's what God has said in you, what you have witnessed and you know to be true. That is the life flow. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and loving not our lives unto the end. That's exactly what he's talking about is the blood of the lamb is the initiation. The word of the testimony is the spirit of prophecy. It's the testimony of Jesus of what he has done for you and in you and through you. And by the grace of God, that's an empowering thing because you now become a witness, a living witness. And, and the ones that bear witness in the earth are the spirit, the blood, and the water. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Here. Hallelujah. <coughs> Ezekiel 37.10 So I prophesied as he commanded me. Well, let me back up to 37.9 again. Uh, part B. Thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain for what reason? That they may live. Amen? Hallelujah. Remember, we have already moved from death to life. The breath of God has already breathed in us and upon us. What we've got to do is learn to live. Amen. We just have to learn to live. And, and that life is not in the dying of a flesh but in the life of a spirit. So I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood upon their feet an exceeding great army. That's a, Amen. That's it is prophetic. And, and, and the thing that God is, is wanting us to see is that that life-giving spirit is who you have become. Amen. And the Holy Ghost of God who is in us is trying in, in every way that we will let him to bring us to the knowledge of that truth so we know the things that have been freely given to us already by God. And we'll quit asking for them. Just start thanking him. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Glory to you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. You lover of my soul. Amen. What is the significance of the word holy in relation to the Holy Spirit? Well, holy is kind of important because there's all kinds of spirits out there. Holy kind of gives you an indicator of what the nature, the purity, amen? Uh, let's look at a couple of these. God is holy, and the Spirit of God is essentially the same in all divine attributes. In other words, if you run into the Spirit of God, guess what? You have run into God. Uh, holy. <laughs> Good news, the Spirit of God is in you, and the Spirit of God gave you birth by the living Word of God. You, so you take God and add God to it, and what do you get? You get God. Hallelujah. Wow. That's why he's the God of gods. He's the king of kings. Hallelujah. Here. Lord of lords. Lord. The use of the adjective of holy in connection with the Spirit of God is found about a hundred times in the Bible. The Holy Spirit is distinguished from all other spirits that are not holy. Amen? The Holy Spirit is distinct. Now, there are a lot of other things 
Uh, when you go through scripture, it talks about the seven spirits of God. And you hear about the spirit of peace, the spirit of grace, the spirit of mercy, the spirit of love, all these different things. Well, all of those are individual manifestations of the one. Amen. Amen. But what we're seeing here is also that the Holy Spirit, by designation, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, is separated from all the others, <coughs> such as familiar spirits. That spirits of divination, spirits of witchcraft, things of that nature. Uh, familiar spirits are, are those types of spirits that are energized by the dark side and not from the light side. Evil spirits, same type of a thing. The Holy Spirit is not evil. Amen. But there are evil spirits. In spite of what a lot of people might teach or practice, uh, evil spirits are out there every day. I got here early today and prayed through this building. When I came in and, and I prayed on the way up here, I was just feeling the Spirit of God all over me. I come in and, and start turning the system on and it's like you could hear stuff dragging across the floor. All this stuff was happening. I said, uh-huh, you know I'm here, don't you? In Jesus' name, you ain't going to be here. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. An open building is just an, an avenue for things to happen. But you know what? You can't let those things hang around. It's just a building. But by the grace of God, when, when the church shows up, it's time for all that junk to get out yes, of here. Amen. Sir. Just no place for it. Because what it wants to do is distract. It wants to try to get your attention, your focus off on other things. Evil spirits, there's also lying spirits, <coughs> unclean spirits, foul spirits. Most of these can be found in a normal church service. Mm. Uh, spirits of divination, uh, seducing spirits, spirits of witchcraft. There's all kinds of, of different ones and different things. that. Uh, but the distinction given to the Spirit of God is holy. Amen. So the Holy Ghost of God is just that. It's pure. If the Holy Ghost is inside you, and I, I pray that he is, then you too are holy. Amen. How do I know that? Because the Holy Ghost will not dwell in an unclean vessel. Here. Yes. That's why the blood is applied first to make you holy, and then the presence of the Holy Ghost in you has a sanctified house to, to abide in and to function in. But when you are born again, you are holy by birth. Yes. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. That's some good stuff right there, Mac. Yes. Right. If you ain't born again, you better get you some. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes. Hallelujah. It's, it's the design of God. Then there's spirits of devils. And I, I, I cannot overstate the ignorance of most of what the body of Christ does when it comes to dealing with these types of spirits because they're everywhere. Jesus, think about it. Jesus, I think he was kind of smart, don't you? I think he was in touch with what was going on. He said, don't take any thought for tomorrow. Not that you have things you wouldn't need tomorrow. Don't take any thought because the evil of today is sufficient enough for you to deal with. But most people don't deal with the evil. They just deal with their circumstances. And, and the, what they don't understand is in the invisible realm, there are the manipulators. It's afflicting and affecting. And that's why God gave us spiritual weapons of warfare to defeat and conquer those things. You don't have to walk around all day long. I, I fight you devils. I fight you evil, wicked spirits. I come against you now. Do it. Take care of it in the morning. Get a little time in the day. Reinforce it. In the evening or that night, reinforce it again, lay down, and get you some good sleep. Here it is. In the morning, do it again. Why? Because it's a new day. And Jesus said that that day was sufficient enough. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But most of the body of Christ ignores it. And, you know, that's it's unfortunate, but it just simply is. The Holy Spirit represents a holy God. Uh, Leviticus 11, 44, 45. For I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves and you shall be holy for I am holy. <coughs> now the truth was 
They couldn't sanctify themselves. The, the only way they could possibly move in that direction was to obey what God had made available to them through the, the law and the prophets. That those their communications would tell them what they needed to do to sanctify themselves. In the process of trying to sanctify ourselves, we should all understand we need the true sanctifier. We need the true one who will sanctify us once forever. Amen. And the same thing as the law. The law never made anybody righteous. The law never gave anybody salvation. The law never gave anybody life. There was never a law given that could. Yet most of the body of Christ is, is all out of shape about the Ten Commandments and all these other things. And all the Ten Commandments, when you read them, you should say, that ain't me, help. And Jesus says, here I am. I love you. Amen. Believe on me. Righteousness is not in the law. It's in Christ. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and Hosea 11, 9, I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God and not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee, and I will not enter into the city. Amen. When, when your eyes are open and, and you're, you see the story of Christ and you see and have the communications of God, take time and go back and read the Old Testament again. Amen. It'll blow you away. You, you'll see things you never even knew was there. Don't read through it. Read it to learn. Read for understanding. And uh, you'll be surprised. There's a book in a book. Amen. But the, the Holy Spirit of God represents the Holy God and that's one of the manifestations of that holiness, that purity. The Holy Spirit is in the world to exalt the Holy Servant Jesus. For of the truth against the Holy Child Jesus whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Amen? Amen. The, the magnification of God, the holiness of God is, is attributed not only to the Holy Ghost and to the Father, but also to the Son. And here we see that the actions of the Holy Ghost in our lives was to promote and to display the power and the authority that was actually in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you remember when they, uh, I think it was James and John at the gate called Beautiful, or was it Peter and John? And in, in any case, at the gate called Beautiful, the guy gets healed. Silver, gold, had none, but such as have in the name of Jesus Christ, rise and walk. What they their defense was, he's not standing here because of us. He's standing here because of the faith that is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That was the whole thing. It was not by their own power, by their own might, that that happened, but because Jesus was who he was. And they couldn't say a whole lot about it, although they wanted to, because the guy was standing there. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, the Holy Spirit inspired holy men to write a holy book for prophecy never came by the will of man. The holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's in the world to deal with the sin issue. <coughs> John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So his ministry is not just to the believer, but he has a ministry also that he's carrying out. And if you remember, the thing about the world is the world is in darkness. So when things are in darkness, they do whatever they want because they can't really see what's happening. But all of a sudden, somebody flips the light on we are the light Amen. of the world. 
that through the displaying of Christ and the goodness of God that's in our life and the manifestation of the kingdom of God, it should light up the things that are around us so that those that sit in darkness see a great light. And in that light, they begin to see that they are doing bad things. They're in error. They need deliverance. They need help. They need uh, the righteousness or, that comes from God, that what they're doing becomes exceedingly sinful. Now, he reproves the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment, John 16, 9, of sin because they believe not on me. It's not on sin because they're out there cussing and beating people and killing people. Of sin because they believe not on him. Amen? But that kind of narrows it down. Well, your hair's a little long. I, I can't tell you the number of times I heard that when I was young in Christ. You're going to hell because your hair is down on your shoulders. You know? Got nothing to do with it. Amen? It's the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Not that we vocalize it, but that we display the light. <coughs> of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more. None of the others ever went to him. Amen? Jesus was declaring that his return to the Father would declare that the righteousness that he had manifested and displayed was the true righteousness that was of God. So they saw him received up out of their sight by a cloud, and they heard the Father confirming to them, this is my Son in whom I am well pleased. And John 16, 11, of judgment, because the prince of this world one day will be judged. Is judged. Amen? Say that. We say the prince of this world is judged. Hallelujah. He's already been sentenced. He's already been served. The, the, the hammer has already dropped on him. And that when Jesus was doing it over in Luke chapter 10 and the 70 came back, he said, I know. I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Amen? Amen. So, by the grace of God, the Holy Ghost in our life is doing more than just working in us. But that holiness of God through his spirit that is in us becomes a light that shines out in the darkness that exposes their sin, their unrighteousness, and their need for discipline. And what the Holy Ghost does is through that light that he begins to announce and we have the pro proclamation of the gospel so that whosoever will can come. So the work of the Holy Ghost is in us to work through us, just like what we talked about earlier uh, in the other session. If we won't let him work in us and to us, then he can't work through us. And, and the whole thing is to get it out there. Is that where we're at? No. We finally reached lesson five. <coughs> I think we'll just cut it short right there. What, what I do want to do is to, to, to just renew and, and review some of the things we covered in for. I think it's one of the most important chapters that we've had. Uh, a lot of revelation uh, is in there. If you didn't get it, go back and go over it again. Get a CD, get a DVD, go through the workbook. There's some incredible things in there. And what I want you to do is to find you in those things. Because we are the ones that God release the Holy Ghost to dwell in us. He didn't send him to the angels. He didn't send him anywhere but to be in you. And, and since we have him in dwelling, that makes you the anointed one. What are you anointed with? The Holy Ghost of God. Now that you are the anointed one, it doesn't make you the Messiah, but it does make you the Christo, the anointed one of God in the earth, the Christ of God, and you are one. And the things of God that he has done whether you are, or feel like you're in need of knowledge or understanding or wisdom or peace or grace or love or mercy or a better relationship, which is righteousness, all these different things, quit looking outside yourself and look inside. The one that can move you from where you are to where you want to be just needs a little bit of you time and him time to get along together with him and let him move, basically change our stinking thinking <coughs> so that we understand some of the basic truths. 
Why would God ever say, as he is, so are we? Why, why would he say that? Because it's true. true. Amen. He didn't say, as I am, I want you to get there one day and do the best you can, but if you don't make it, it's okay, I still love you. No, he said, as I am, as, as he is, so are we. But we are that in this world. And that becomes a manifestation and a creature and a creation that had never been before. Amen. So by the grace of God, Jesus being the last Adam, the firstborn of all of us, then we need to realize that he gave us a great demonstration of what can happen. The thing was is Jesus had to contend against sin at the same time that he was manifestation, the gift and the blessings of God. But Jesus, our great high priest and the one we love so much, delivered his own body and his own blood up for us so that we no longer have the sin issue. The, the thing that we can do now is dominate the flesh and by the Spirit put to death the deeds of the flesh and start enjoying the life that God intended for us to have. And that life becomes a life to those that are around us. And, and that life becomes a light, an illumination that, that causes people to be drawn uh, not to a program or not to uh, a social group, but they are drawn to the light. And, and when they're drawn to the light, they're going to find him. They're drawn by the love. It's the goodness of God that causes people to change. It's not a new program. It's not a new quarterly. It's simply the, the goodness of God. And you don't underestimate the power of God in you. But remember the wind, that you now are wind. Say, say I am wind. I am wind. Amen. I'm not saying break wind. I'm saying you are the wind. <laughs> that we are the wind and that since we are the wind, just remember that by revelation and, and by declaration of the scripture, the wind's going to push you, it can drive you, but it can clean you. It can be mighty, and it can be a whisper. It, it can be anything that he wants it to be. It's sovereign, and God causes it to function and do the thing he wants it to do. Don't try to control the wind. Let the wind control you. Amen. Don't try to drive the wind. Let the wind drive you. And, and what you'll find out is, is that it's an adventure. It's a joy. It's, it's an incredible place to be. But I think we're a little bit further now than we were when we started today. Amen. And by the grace of God, the work that the Father has begun, He's faithful to fully complete it. Amen? Amen. And establish us in it. Let's pray that. Father, we thank You. You're so awesome. You're so gracious and merciful to all of us. Thank You for breathing fresh in our life today. And Lord, we breathe in that breath that You have brought to us. We desire to hear the words that's being carried upon that wind and let those words sink into our hearing, Father, and by your grace, Holy Ghost of God, establish us, settle us, found us in this truth that is present with us today. Lord, help us in your mercy and grace to grow up into you in all things. <coughs> we thank you for that, Father. You said if we ask, we will receive, so we thank you and give you praise. And receive all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Amen.